Good happy Tuesday morning, April 16, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Granite Staters reflect on fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. For so many, it's hard to comprehend this image. The history, art, and faith of Paris's iconic Notre Dame Cathedral, surrounded by fire. It's a big, massive, strong, and it speaks of strength. When this happens, you realize nothing is as strong as we think it is. Bishop Peter Labashi has been to the 12th century cathedral twice, even presiding over mass there 12 years ago. I think the human spirit is always looking for the beautiful, the strong, the true, the good. And the church symbolizes that in so many ways, particularly in these holy days like uh, Holy Week and Easter, they would have filled that church uh, because it's a home. Notre Dame has a special place in the hearts of students and staff at Hanover High School. Almost two years to the day, its choir footnotes performed inside. The power of the space with the resonance of, of the voices and, and feeling that all together, um, and, and what a gift. You're not a visitor, and you're not a tourist. You're actually in the space and participating in the history of it. And as your voices come out, they go off and go into the stones and stay there. And now people will come together in hopes of rebuilding one of the world's great treasures. They're broken hearted and the world is stunned. We always take care of the broken hearted and upbuild the stunned. Just as Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus and new life, those of faith feel that Notre Dame will have a similar fate. Reporting live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Flood watch remains in effect for rivers in Carroll, Coas, and Grafton counties. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Sharif LeClaire. Do you need a new roof but think you can't afford it? Our average customer pays $7,500 for a total roof replacement, and we have finance plans with payment options under $150 per month. Call today. Century Roofing, we've got you covered. Gushing waters as rainfall and snow melt create the perfect recipe for river flooding. Be prepared. Take a look at what's going on. Watch the weather. Watch Channel 9. You know, be, be aware of what your surroundings. Perry Plummer, director of New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and his team have been monitoring multiple trouble spots across the state. Certainly uh, the North Country, you know, the... the Hemi, the Gale River up in Milan still has an ice jam. Um, we still have an ice jam in Franconia. So those are really, you know, things that we're watching. The seacoast, high tide, they're watching that as well. Like the Connecticut River in Dalton and in West Lebanon, where a flood warning was also in effect. And flood watches remain in Carroll, Grafton, and Coas counties as well, where snow is still melting. Here in Plymouth, a notorious area for flooding, this parking lot behind Plymouth State University's ice arena along routes 3 and 25, Tonight, police blockades warning people to stay out. And in Littleton, minor flooding calling first responders to this scene where Shaw's and Walmart had to close for some time. Turn around, don't drown. Don't drive through water if you don't know what's underneath it. You know, we always ask residents that because you don't know if the road is washed out, the, the water may be deeper than anticipated. 
Now the watches in the northern counties as well as that warning in Dalton are in effect until further notice. Live in Plymouth tonight, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man charged after girl to shot while she slept in Newport home. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Dr. Robert Marshall and the team at Aesthetic Dental Center are proud to offer Invisalign, the popular clear all. We could have lost her. John Martioski is counting his blessings, grateful his two year old daughter Lennox will be okay after she was shot in the leg Sunday night. She could have been a, a, a foot to the left, it could have been in her heart or her head. Lennox was sleeping in her bedroom when John and his girlfriend heard a loud boom. My girlfriend runs over to the baby. And there's debris everywhere. She said something exploded around the baby. Didn't know what it was. We're looking. She picks up the blanket and starts screaming, Oh my God, her knee is gone. A bullet fired from the apartment below went through the floor and hit Lennox. The whole top of her knee was blown clear off. And John says if it wasn't for his girlfriend's quick thinking, the whole situation could have been a lot worse. She picked the baby up, ran into the bedroom, uh, applied a tourniquet as I was on 911. Lennox is being treated at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. While she was having surgery on her knee, the man allegedly responsible for the shooting appeared in court. 51-year-old Timothy Hale was charged with second-degree assault and reckless conduct. Prosecutors say Hale showed signs that he'd been drinking and claimed some person had gotten into his apartment, leading to a very dangerous situation. I think that given the fact here that this is what the state's alleging is, we believe, an accident, and a very, very unfortunate accident, but nonetheless an accident, not a crime. Hale was released on bail with several conditions. John says his family knows Hale well and they have a good relationship, but says he acted carelessly. He had just brought my daughter cookies earlier in the day, and that's what made it so tough on us. As for Lennox, she has a long road to recovery ahead of her. She's going to get a cast, then we're looking at six more weeks with the cast. And uh, then after that, she's going to have to go through therapy to relearn how to walk again. Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Convicted child molester seeks suspension of sentence. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jennifer Crompton. Dr. Robert Marshall and the team at Aesthetic Dental Center have been changing people's lives since 1970. Back in 2002, then 46-year-old Philip Raftery was sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison after pleading guilty to 15 counts of sexually assaulting four young boys over a 10-year period. Today, using a cane, the now 62-year-old was back in Stratford County Superior Court. The former Farmington man is eligible for parole in 2021, but he's asking a judge to suspend the rest of his minimum sentence and all the maximum, the county attorney objecting. What Mr. Raftery was hoping to do today would be to uh, avoid any parole process, be released from the state prison where he's been for approximately 17 years for a number of sex crimes, and have no supervision in the community. His prison records show good behavior and completion of a rehabilitation program, but the county attorney says given the number of victims and crimes, he should serve at least his minimum. At some point this man will get paroled. He should have to go through a parole process, make sure that he is properly vetted to have appropriate housing, uh, that children in the area are kept safe uh, from him, and also that he's able to live uh, in a manner that will help him thrive in the community and not be a further burden. Raftery representing himself, saying very little. 
Do you have any response you'd like me to consider, sir? Okay, it's all in your motion. Victims were notified of today's hearing, but they didn't appear. Now, the judge says he'll review that entire file, including the victim statements from 2002, before he issues the decision. Live in Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. WMUR Runners Complete Boston Marathon. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carissa and Nako Fumiyama. Right now at Ippolito's during our double discount sale, you can save 20 to 40 percent off select floor samples. We love hearing about <laughs> all these incredible accomplishments here at the Boston Marathon. And you know what? We have a few of our own as well. Jim Lord, our esteemed photographer, ran the Boston Marathon for his third year. Also, Jamie Staten, his sixth year. And our news director, Alicia McDevitt. All three of them crossed the finish line, and we are so proud of them. I was good. I mean, I'm so happy. I mean, this is my third one, and I mean, run the Boston Marathon. Like I said before, it's just I love it. I'm so happy. I mean, it's like I have so many people out there cheering for me. Running by BC, just the crowd to carry you like that, and it had been a hard start to the race. It was really hot, but to have that crowd carry you, there was it was amazing. And the crowd is so amazing. They just won't let you quit. They won't let you stop. And, you know, it's the it's the greatest race in the world. So to be able to run it and come down Boylston Street, it's like you're in a movie. And to cross that line, I can't even explain it. I mean, I can speak for myself when I stand on the finish line and watch just complete strangers cross over. It's very emotional for me to see to see them cross over. It was a very special moment for us. It was very special indeed. For Kristen Carosa, I'm Nako Funayama. We are live at the Boston Marathon. Back to you guys in New Hampshire. Very cool indeed. Congratulations to all three of them. Group connects John Stark students with disabilities with peers. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Mike Crone. WMUR News 9, Mike Cherry. This is not your kid's sandbox. This is the place that brings your backyard dreams to life. It's just past noon at John Stark Regional High School. Can you read what a hot spring is? And inside one classroom... Natural pools of hot water. Lessons are a two-way street. I used to always be the guy that was like, I need a set plan of everything that needs to happen. So he's really taught me how to just kind of stay laid back, just hang out. CJ is the student leader for Best Buddies, a program that allows kids with disabilities to engage with their peers. CJ's best buddy for the last year is Evan. You want to go say hi to the lunch ladies? Yeah. Prior to Best Buddies, Evan's mother says he had trouble connecting with fellow students. Now, he's finding common ground. Just seeing him connecting is huge. It's, it's one of the things as a mother that you couldn't be happier about. Best Buddies has made a seismic shift in the school's culture. CJ started a petition to get rid of the R word. His goal was to have pledges from half the school's 700 students. Isaac's on there. Isaac is on there. He collected 351 signatures. These kids have been a part of our community, uh, and so I think kids were happy to find a way to get organized and get involved with the kids. This is a good walk. Now they have each other in their lives, and neither can see it any other way. I, I like uh, all of it. Man. Evan really helped me like fully understand what it means to be inclusive. So I feel without having Evan around, I'd have a little bit of a gap. You know, like something would be missing. Now, the Best Buddies program is less than a year old, and its volunteers serve six students at John Stark.
Currently, the group has 18 volunteer members, and it's hoping to grow that number next year. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dow features move higher ahead of fresh earnings. U.S. stocks index feature moves higher Tuesday morning as market participants awaited further earnings report. YouTube mistakenly flags Notre Dame fire videos as 9-11 conspiracy. YouTube said its anti-misinformation tool made the wrong call on Monday. YouTube apologized on Monday for mistakenly linking the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris to the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.